for COVID, I felt myself saying it's do or die. You have to actually adapt yourself to the situation or your craft will die. Uh, my name is Tristan Griffin. I'm from Kansas City, born and raised. Um, went to Texas Christian University, yeah, study ballet and stuff, and then I joined Garden Bank and Dance Company after I graduated, and then being freelancing after that, and then freelancing, just traveling um, all around the U.S. Um, for a couple years after that, so consistently in Kansas City for the past three years, and um, it's home. It's definitely changed, like when I was a kid, downtown was not as it is today. I was just like um, in culture shock because I wasn't used to that, but I'm grateful that it's kind of changed in a new era because it needed to happen. Um, because when the economy boosts, the arts, for, uh, supporting the arts boosts. So I um, started dance with my bro brother, actually. I was like 11, 12 years old. Um, and we were actually in the competition circuit, so it was very like diluted kind of like uh, dance. It wasn't like serious training. We were just learning routines, producing them, you know, dancing in them, not really learning the reason why. So it wasn't until like I was 16 that I started to say, okay, if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it like the way it's supposed to be done. And to me, the way it's supposed to be done is knowing the reason why. I started doing ballet, jazz, modern. Yeah, that's when I was like, this is, this is hard. This is really hard. There was something in there in dance that I still haven't found to this day in any other craft. I'm always thinking about it. It's always in my mind. I see it in everyday life when people see a bird flying, I see how a bird dances, you know, so it's like things of that nature where um, my eyes, my brain works in a different way uh, than yourself. I'm sure like as a photographer, you see pictures, you see moments, but for me, I see like how the movement flows in and out of something. So that's kind of like, for me, the passion behind it. And when I realized that, that that was my passion. I wanted it to be my career. So I just started really, really training hard. I researched these people, um, very successful dancers, and I was like, okay, I want to be at that level. The thing of, to me as a problem solver is the, the, the nickname as a partner because you're Putting out all the pieces, which are the dancers, the movement, the concept, the piece, the lighting, all of that, costumes, how I can piece all those things together, how I can make that um, a production. So when I get nervous, sometimes those pieces don't always fit together the way that we rehearsed or the way that I planned in my head. It's up to the dancer to communicate how those pieces fit together. So sometimes communication doesn't happen and or to the best of quality and that's when things kind of go askew and you know things happen, mistakes happen or um, my message might not be as clear and so that's where I get nervous. The bad nerves to me is that you want to live up to an expectation it's a little bit actually toxic to think those thoughts um, because no one ever is perfect, and especially in the artists. In fact, we thrive off of imperfection. And so for us to actually think we have to be perfect for an audience or for the message to get across or be accepted, it's a, it's a flaw, it's a myth. I just adapted. You know, as a photographer, as an artist, even, you have to adapt to the situation. And so for COVID, 
I don't know if you went through this, but I felt myself saying it's do or die. You have to actually adapt yourself to the situation or your craft will die. And I think that's why uh, Caroline, who kind of uh, was a spearhead to this con William Senior concert, um, seen or unseen, art remains. And that's kind of like where that comes from. You do or die, like either you have to do the art and it remains or you don't do the art and that's it because i really haven't done dance or film before and so i had to uh, study that i had to look at other works that were dance for film because it did exist not to this extent <laughs> because everyone was doing it everyone was trying uh, but I, I studied the originals and kind of what was being put out at the moment and i produced like a couple dance films um that I was able to like, okay, I did that. Like I challenged myself, I pushed myself to like adapt my art to the environment, to the conditions and yeah. Bottom line, if you have some inkling of like, I don't know, a voice that's keeping you attracted to something, keep listening to that voice, fine tune that voice so that that voice is the only voice you hear. Uh, especially nowadays, it was like, you know, the TikTok, Instagram, people see instant um, product. And that's not the case, especially in something like this where you're doing it for years and years. And something like photography where you're trying to find that image that says everything you needed to say. So my advice is just fine tune that voice that you hear for your passion, your craft, and fine tune it and listen to it make it bigger, make it stronger, and that becomes your voice as an artist. Your voice becomes your identity, and it's just you. It's your fingerprint, I guess you could say.